Hey Cheesehead Nation, the Green Bay Packers are riding high after a thrilling win over the Texans, but this week's matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars has all the earmarks of a trap game. With morale high in a divisional game against the Lions next week, this matchup is not to be underestimated. The Jaguars, despite their 2-5 record, have some dangerous weapons and are motivated after beating the Patriots in London. Let's take a look at the key battles from this matchup and see who has the edge in each department. Let's dive in. On one hand, Jordan Love has been a bold QB, playing aggressively and already accumulating 15 touchdowns this season. However, he is also among the leaders in interceptions, with 8, which shows that his bold decisions do not always work. Love is playing to win and has already shown that he is not afraid to risk long passes, what's more, even when the opportunities are limited. This makes him an unpredictable player, capable of turning the game around at any moment. Trevor Lawrence, on the other hand, is the model of consistency. With nine touchdowns and only three interceptions, he avoids mistakes and keeps his team competitive. The problem is that the Jaguars are disappointing in 2024, and Lawrence, despite good individual performances, has not been able to turn that into consistent victories. With a solid offensive line, he can take advantage of the Packers' defense's flaws if given time to operate. Both QBs have something to prove in this matchup. Love needs to show he can be decisive without compromising the team with turnovers, while Lawrence looks to reclaim his status as the league's emerging star. It will be an intense battle between two young talents, but Love may be the slight favorite due to his ability to create big plays in critical moments. The Packers' passing attack has been a roller coaster, but when Jordan Love and his wide receivers are on the same page, they're hard to contain. Christian Watson and Romeo Dubes are a dynamic duo that can stretch the field and Love knows how to use those talents to create explosive plays. The Jaguars' secondary, however, has been one of the team's weak points. They rank last in the league in passer rating allowed to opposing quarterbacks, which is a red flag. With Jacksonville's defense allowing 71% completions, the Packers have a golden opportunity to exploit. Love won't have to push as hard as he did against stronger defenses like the Texans. If the Packers' offensive line gives the QB time to work, we could see a festival of long passes and big plays from their receivers. Plus, the return of Travon Walker hasn't been enough to fix the pressure problem in the pass rush. While Travon Walker and Josh Allen form a defensive line with the potential to generate pressure, the Packers have already shown that they can neutralize dangerous pass rushes, as we saw against Danielle Hunter and Will Anderson. If Green Bay's line holds, the path will be open for Love to connect important passes and secure a comfortable advantage in the passing game. The Packers' ground game has been inconsistent this season. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon form a duo that, on good days, can be devastating, but injuries and a lack of consistency on the offensive line have limited their impact on the ground. Jones, when healthy, is a difference maker in the backfield with his ability to run and catch passes, but he needs more space to do damage. However, the Jaguars have a very solid run defense. The Jaguars' run defense is among the best in the league, allowing just 102.6 yards per game. They are good at stopping the run game and can force the Packers to be one-dimensional, which puts more pressure on Jordan Love. The last time the Packers faced a strong run defense was against the Texans, and the result was not great. If the Packers can't run well, Love will have to shoulder a lot more responsibility. On the other hand, Jacksonville's running game has been spectacular, with Tank Bigsby leading the way. His 6.2 yards per carry average shows the threat he brings on every snap. With Travis Etienne returning from injury, the Packers will need to have their best defensive performance of the season to contain these weapons. If they falter on the ground, the Jaguars can control the clock and limit Love's opportunities on offense. The Packers' pass defense has been solid, led by Jaire Alexander and the constant pressure that the front seven imposes. The big question heading into this matchup is whether the Packers can keep Trevor Lawrence under pressure. Lawrence has been well protected, with one of the lowest pressure rates in the NFL. But the Packers' pass rush, led by Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark, has everything to bother him throughout the game. The key will be to create discomfort in the pocket and force mistakes. 
Lawrence, however, is not an easy quarterback to bring down. Even under pressure, he has mobility that can help him escape sacks and extend plays. The connection with Brian Thomas Jr. and Christian Kirk could also be a problem for Green Bay's secondary, especially if the pressure doesn't come quickly enough. Thomas is a wide receiver who can stretch the field and break up big plays from deep, while Kirk in the slot is a constant threat. The Packers need to force Lawrence to rush and make poor decisions. If he has time to throw, the pass defense could be exposed, especially against such a talented receiving unit. The balance between maintaining pressure and covering targets well will be key for Green Bay to maintain an advantage in this aspect of the game. Brian Thomas Jr. has been the revelation in the Jaguars' passing attack. With 30 receptions and an impressive average of 17.1 yards per reception, he is the type of player who can cause a lot of problems for the Packers' defense. If Green Bay focuses too much on him, Christian Kirk, playing as a slot receiver, can exploit space and move the chains for the Jaguars. The Packers' defense, meanwhile, counts on Jair Alexander to neutralize one of the opponent's main threats. Additionally, Evan Engram is a key player who could make a difference. The tight end returned in style last week and has a knack for creating mismatches, especially against linebackers. The Packers will have to decide whether to prioritize coverage of Engram or the wide receivers, which opens up opportunities for Trevor Lawrence to explore different areas of the field. The Packers' secondary has been playing well, but they will be challenged by this versatile passing attack. They will need a collective effort to not only neutralize key targets, but also prevent explosive plays that could change the momentum of the game. If Alexander and company can do a good job, the Packers will have the advantage. The Jaguars' running game, with Tank Bigsby and Travis Etienne, is the heart of the offense. Bigsby has impressed with his ability to break tackles and gain yards after contact. His performance in recent weeks, with 100-plus yards in two of the last three games, proves he can punish defenses that aren't well-positioned. If Travis Etienne returns from injury, the Packers will have to deal with an explosive backfield duo. The Packers' historically weak ground defense needs to be at its best. They've shown improvement this season, but they were still exposed against the Houston Texans last week, when Joe Mixon ran the ball easily. The key will be to contain Bigsby and not let the Jaguars' ground game dictate the pace of the game. Otherwise, Jacksonville can control the clock and limit the Packers' possessions. If the Packers' defense can't adjust, it's going to be a long day for Joe Barry's unit. They'll need to be aggressive, get quick tackles and keep Bigsby and ETN from gaining ground freely. Forcing the Jaguars to rely more on Lawrence could be the key to Green Bay's defensive success. Pressure on the quarterback will be key in this game. Green Bay has the advantage of having pass rushers like Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark, who have been playing at a high level. Against a Jaguars offensive line that has done a good job protecting Lawrence, the mission will be to get the ball quickly and not give the quarterback time to explore the field with his receivers. Lawrence, despite being talented, makes mistakes under pressure. This will be an interesting tactical battle. Pedersen has the track record and ability to motivate his players to overcome adversity, while Lafleur will have to keep the Packers focused and prevent the team from underestimating the Jaguars. Both coaches have a lot at stake, and their decisions during the game will be crucial. This is a classic trap game for the Packers. Coming off a big win over the Texans and with a key divisional matchup against the Lions next week, it's easy to imagine Green Bay taking it easy against the Jaguars. However, you can't be too careful. A motivated team like Jacksonville, with no pressure and nothing to lose, could spring a surprise if the Packers don't play seriously. To avoid this trap, the Packers need to impose their game early. If Green Bay starts with intensity and builds an early lead, forcing Trevor Lawrence to play under pressure, they can control the pace of the game. But if they let the Jaguars believe they can win, the game could become more complicated than it needs to be. This will be a true test of maturity for the Packers. They have the advantage on paper, but execution on the field will be the difference. If the team comes in focused and executes the game plan well, victory will be assured. What's up Packers fans?
The team has everything it needs to secure another victory, but we can't afford to let the Jaguars down. Do you agree with the analysis? Leave your opinion on the highlights of the game in the comments. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more analysis and news about our Green Bay Packers. Go Pack Go!